What two capital cities will perform among the best in Australia over the next two to three years where capital growth will occur, where house prices will rise, even in the backdrop of interest rates going up a little bit, in the backdrop of Sydney prices coming down a little bit, and even Melbourne prices coming down a bit. Okay, so if you want to know where to invest right now, keep watching. My name's PK and I help people build passive income through the Property Investment Accelerator using data mentorship program without needing a $15,000 buyer's agent every single time. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm really glad that you're here. Hit the subscribe button and give it a thumbs up. Give this video a like if you're interested in wise, data-driven, insightful property investing. Okay, so one of the best ways to explain and ascertain where property prices will go up is to see their price disparity compared to other cities historically. For example, around this time last year, around March, April last year in 2021, I did a video on the Gold Coast. I explained that Gold Coast prices, they go up and then they come down a little bit. They go up, then they come down a little bit. It's a cycle, but every 10 years, their disparity to Sydney house prices grows to 50% and then it shrinks and then it grows the price disparity average house price in Gold Coast versus average house price in Sydney grows to 50% and then it shrinks this time last year that disparity was 50% what happened in the next 12 months that disparity came down now prices in Sydney didn't drop mind you it's house prices in the Gold Coast rose by more than 30 or 40 percent okay so it's really powerful data so how can we use this disparity model to see which are the best cities to invest right now there are markets within markets guys just because sydney is going down in value that doesn't mean the entire australia is made up of sydney <laughs> there are other markets with their own cycles with their own economies with their own employment with their own stuff going on cycles so um, which are those that have the greatest price disparity right now and are a bit like the Gold Coast 12 months ago? Well, here's the first chart. Um, the first chart is Perth house prices versus other capital cities. And what you can see is that back here, if you go all the way back, 1973, Perth prices were about 80%, right? 80% as expensive as other capital cities and then there was a huge boom and house prices in Perth they really went up in fact they became more expensive than the average house price across other capital cities which is this marked line here 80 percent okay they became a hundred percent and then they came down to 65 percent and then they went back to that long-term median again um, at 80% as expensive as average capital city house prices. Then they came down and then you saw that huge mining boom, right? You saw the huge mining boom and then house prices in Perth. Mind you, Perth has the second highest average incomes compared to Sydney. So there's, you know, some good rationale for this boom to happen. And then they came down, dipped a little bit, and it was really around 2014 that the markets had had enough. It was just far too expensive. Mining boom went away, the tide went out, and they really came down. Okay, and since that, this time, what you'll find is in 2021, at the end of 2021, at the start of 2022, prices have been coming back up. In fact, there have been areas in uh, Perth, south side of Perth, let's say 20 k's from the city where a 300 k house has already become a 400 k house, even in the last six to eight months, okay? So, of course, markets within markets, even within a capital city. But what this tells us is that price disparity of Perth versus capital cities on average is so huge. It's never been this low. There's only one way it can go. And just keep in mind, pr house um, hold income is really high in Perth. The mining sector is doing really well. It's more diversified now than it ever was, you know, towards resources. There are other uh, industries like education, like healthcare, that have become more and more boom industries in Perth. And just human psychology, you know, if 
house prices have become too expensive in Sydney, Melbourne, and other places, then people migrate. And I can tell you there are a record number of migration, interstate migration from Sydney, from Melbourne to WA right now. And this is not just mining workers, it's just other folks as well and other employment sectors. So this is a telltale sign that reversion to the mean is going to happen at some point. Now, of course, we can't say exactly when it will happen, but there is great value to be had in the Perth property market and of course markets within markets there are some markets that in Perth itself are closer to the red and others that are closer to here so it's all down to the suburb you can't just say Perth is a good or bad place to invest there are always good and bad suburbs within a capital city that perform differently okay so just because Sydney prices are going down doesn't mean that all the rest of Australia is going down as well and then the second city that is likely to do the most well or where the capital growth will be superior compared to most other parts of Australia is Brisbane. You can see here that Brisbane is normally actually a little bit cheaper than Perth relative to other capital cities. It's more like 77 or 78 percent, this equilibrium, this long term average. This red line, Perth was up at 80%. So back in 1973, we were at equilibrium. Then Brisbane became cheaper relative to other capital cities. Then it spiked up, you know, it's a typical cycle. Um, and then it came down again, then spiked up again, then came down again. Obviously, you know, through the 2000 to 2014 period or even 2010 period leading up to the GFC, you know, mining boom saw Brisbane property prices, you know, go right back up, okay, and then they started coming down again. This was no surprise um, relative to the capital city median because that's what's happened once, twice, three times before, and now they're on their trajectory back up. So immense value in Brisbane. Now, I know a lot of people are a little bit skittish because of the floods and whatnot. <clears throat> you know, floods are no longer a one in 100 year event. You know, they happen every 10 years. And if you actually analyze the last 200 years of flooding history in Brisbane, you know, it ends up happening about once every two, 20 years. So anyone who says once in a 100 year event, you know, it's probably not right. In fact, the data suggests it's not right. What does that mean? That means that there will always be flood affected areas in Brisbane and not a flood affected areas in Brisbane. I live in Brisbane. I can tell you in the last week, I've had no issues. You know, if I didn't turn my TV on or look at the media and news, I wouldn't even know there was a flood. You know, large parts of Brisbane weren't even affected. It's these areas that you should be inv investing in, and you can see the value that exists. And, you know, if history repeats itself or rhymes or has anything to teach us, it suggests that there's so much value here and that prices are going to go up. Now, just think about it. You're in Sydney or Melbourne. Prices are astronomical. You can get a good job in Brisbane. You're going to migrate up with your family, buy a house that's much cheaper, and you have a much better lifestyle, great weather, beaches, all that kind of thing. I mean, even though Brisbane doesn't technically have beaches, but you know what I mean. It's on the coast. Um, so many people are doing that, literally in records, tens of thousands of people. This is what gets us back to the long-term mean. This is what gets us back to the long-term averages, human behavior, okay? Property prices are driven by human behavior, okay? So once again, Brisbane has so much to offer in the next 10 years. These property prices will edge their way back up. I'm not saying Brisbane's going to go up by 40% this year, but definitely more than 15% despite the floods. There might be a little bit of a you know, hang up, maybe the next one or two months might be a little bit shy, but then that property price fundamentals will kick back in and prices will continue going up. So hopefully that was valuable <laughs> to you guys. Those were the two cities that have the largest price disparity compared to the average capital city. Now, of course, we ignored regional areas. The same philosophy or methodology can be applied to regional areas okay there are some regional areas that present tremendous value and others large parts of regional new south wales that don't present tremendous value places like orange have already gone up almost doubled in the last five years right so this is a, a tremendous way to see where value lies and where you should put your money because there are markets within markets just because the media says sydney melbourne price is dropping by two three four five percent 
doesn't mean that that's occurring everywhere. In fact, the opposite could be occurring in other places. So become a borderless investor, invest interstate if you're in Sydney, Melbourne, and understand this data. Most people don't understand it, I can tell you, even professionals. All right, if you really want to understand data like this, level up, join the Facebook group, you know, link below, more than 13,000 people, my podcast, link below, and obviously the Property Investment Accelerator Mentorship Program. My name's PK, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, super appreciate it. Thank you for watching, thank you for being with me, thank you for being part of this community. Catch you later, guys.